Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, have you noticed that Majesty's moo has a completely different ring to it since she's become a mother? Well, say goodbye to her and come along now. Why? What's the big hurry? I want to shower and shave before dinner. Oh, why bother? You look stunning just the way you are. Well, you are easier to please than I am. I am. Oh, Majesty, I'm sorry, but the boss says I must leave, so leave I must. Say goodbye to your calf for me. No, hey, hey, don't wake her. Just tell her later. To think the company of a mere cow can make my wife so whimsical. It's very hard for me to believe that Majesty can't understand what I say. Just look at those soulful eyes. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's not until a woman becomes a mother that she fulfills her real personality. Well, just because you're a mother, too, do you think you have fulfilled your real personality? Seriously, though. Yeah. I, I don't think I completely realized about being a mother until Majesty had her cat. You don't? Do you know, David, an instinct is more important than anything? All the doctors and all the psychiatrists and teachers in all the world, instincts are more important. Well, you're not wrong. So long, Majesty. See you tomorrow. Ooh, it is Ooh, cold. Right. Here, button up your coat. Boy, it's amazing how animals keep themselves warm. You seem to be amazed about everything about animals. I am amazed. They're a revelation. David, if more people would be more like more animals, the world would be a better place to live in. Now that, my dear wife, is one of your more profound observations. I know it is. Something about being in the barn with majesty and watching her feed her calf makes me feel very philosophical. I don't even mind about majesty not giving us any more milk. Well, now that's very fair and square of you. No, 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 I mean it. No joke. Come on. When come I on, watch her on. giving milk to her calf, that makes up for everything. Oh, David, it's so wonderful to be alive and well. To see everything around you going on just the way it's planned to. You approve of things. Approve of them? Oh, I'm delirious of them. I wouldn't give up living with you on the farm or just plain living for a million dollars. You put a high price on things. I, I don't see how anybody ever wants to die. Well, maybe when a person grows very old and very tired. Well, and... maybe. I wonder. Hey, look who's walking up the Ooh. road to our house. Look, Where? see? Oh. That well, looks I... like Jared Tucker to me. Oh, no, Cappy. And why not? How, how hunched up he is. Why, from here, it looks like a very old man. Well, don't you call 86 very old? Yes, ancient. <laughs> David Jared Tucker isn't ancient. He's, he's so spry. He doesn't usually walk around looking like an old crutch. I've forgotten how old 86 really is. Why, David, it is Jared Tucker. I told you it was. Oh, darling, look at him. And just the other night on New Year's Eve, he was as gay and lively... Oh, dear, I wonder what's happened to him. Probably nothing, but at 86, the turn of a weekend can be a very long time. Oh, don't, don't talk like that, David. Hey there, Mr. Tucker. That you, young Norton? Yep. Just so, we're coming down from the barn. Wait up for us. Wind's blowing, Shelly. Don't remember when it felt the wind's so cold. David, he's usually so snooty about the cold and the wind. You know, it, it's funny how we're so attached to that funny old man. Well, he's a pretty wonderful old man. Mm. Hi there, Mr. Tucker. Nice cow. She Fine. milking her calf all right? Well, the calf is a very contented calf, Mr. Tucker. Just sits in her stall and smiles. Smiling and smiles. calves grow up to be smiling cows, and smiling cows are the only kind to give barn space to. <laughs> Come on in the house with us. What are you doing out on a night like this? Oh, I'm not a man for sitting around in the kitchen watching my sister knitting. Knocks down a man's spirit to sit around his kitchen watching the woman knit. Yeah. Ooh, it's freezing tonight. It's cold. Ooh, feels good to get inside. Hey, hurry up, David. Close the door before the cold air freezes the hot air. Right. Here, Boy. give me your coat, Mr. Tucker. I'll keep it on a while if it's a shame to you, son. Give my bones a chance to thaw out. Oh, that's a good idea. Just don't get overheated. Wonder if I'll ever get overheated again. Come on in. There's a fire in the living room. Certainly you'll feel good, uh, won't it? Yes, ma'am. When you can coax me to sit around the fire and not wish I was elsewhere doing something else, yeah. 
When that day comes, Jared Tucker, he, he says the day of reckoning ain't far off. Oh, no such talk. I'm telling you, lad, I never felt my bone so cold. Probably never was so cold. Here, come on, sit down by the fire, come on. It's as if the wind was whispering in my ear that my harvest season is long since gone by, and soon I'll be a yeller husk laying in the cold earth. You turn a pretty phrase, cold bones or no. Guess a man of my age shouldn't complain, but I... I ain't feeling right. Oh? Well, I tried to tell me it wasn't nothing but a twinge of rheumatism, but I ain't one to suffer from rheumatism. No, I ain't. Well, there's always a first time. Not with Jared Tucker, there ain't. I live to be 86 years old without suffering a twinge of rheumatism, and I ain't aiming to start suffering a twinge of rheumatism Mr. now. Mr. Tucker, still, if it is rheumatism, it's rheumatism. That's not serious, you know. Well, and maybe it's, it's, it's more than rheumatism. Maybe it is. Well... I didn't come over here to discuss me aches and pains with my neighbors. Well, that's what neighbors are for, Mr. Tucker. Not Jared Tucker's neighbors, no. I don't complain to nobody. Still, I... I... I do feel kind of green to the lips. I couldn't practically eat no lunch. Oh. Maybe, uh... Maybe we, we just overdid a little too much New Year's Eve. Saturday morning, I was no great shakes myself. Yeah, I've been in a decline ever since. For lunch, all I could get my teeth to dig into was uh, was a couple of mutton chops, some cream corn, some stewed uh, tomatoes, and a baked potato. Had no <laughs> appetite for the rhubarb Delilah cooked up, no. Well, now that I can understand. But I was always very fond of rhubarb. Yep, very fond of rhubarb. Ugh. I says to myself once that the day when I ain't no longer fond of rhubarb, eh... Yeah, I guess we all got to grow old and grow lonesome and grow cold. Oh, Mr. Tucker, I wish you'd stop talking like that. That is terrible. Well, no, I feel kind of wore out. Parcel of bones, parcel of skin, a handful of false teeth, and doggone if it, it don't get me mad because my sister Delilah, she's walking around today just without one twinge. Why, she's as good as the day she turned 70. No, well, your sister Delilah is a good deal younger than you are, Mr. Tucker. Eight years, eight years, son, and a woman eight years younger than a man is a good 15 years older in her bones. Dang it, I always made up my mind I would bury Delilah. I lived with her these past 80 years, so it would sure be my right to bury her, wouldn't it? Yes. And I don't aim to be gypped, neither. I'm very fond of Delilah, but, well, a man's a man, and it's, it's his honor to bury his own sister. Oh, uh, you're just feeling badly today. You'll feel better tomorrow. Here, come on, have a pipe. No. No, thanks. My lungs couldn't take the smoke. Every day you feel bad, son, is a day you're feeling bad, and you never feel better from feeling bad. I'd miss Delilah, but I sure would rather miss Delilah than have Delilah miss me. Sad for a woman to miss a man, even even if he, even if he's only your brother. I I don't know why you're having such morbid ideas tonight, Mister. Tucker. Because Missus Norton may as well face it, like an old horse faces a glue pot. I'm going to die. Oh. Yep, Jared Tucker's going to die. I know it. Today there ain't no denying. Of course you're going to die. What's that? I say, of course you're going to die. I've known that for a long time. What are you talking about, son? We're we're all going to die, and you're going to die right along with the rest and the best of us. Now, that's fine talk from a young sprout like you. Ain't you got no ambition? You may as well face it, Mr. Tucker. You're going to die, and so am I. Nobody lives forever. Oh, I don't like this kind of talk. Well, you may as well face it, too, darling. I'm just as mortal as anybody else. Oh, nope. no. I ain't aiming to die. Never planned to. Never really figured I would. And I don't intend to start counting on it now. Ivory Towers. Well, we've each got one. Son, I'll let you in on a secret. I'm the man that wants to live forever. It's funny, I was just wondering about that today, but a little while ago. But I mean it. There ain't many folks who live to see 86. No. But I ain't got no intention of laying down in a satin coffin. Well, whether you got any intention of it or not, it's an inevitable fact. We're all born to die. Well, speak for yourself, son. Speak for yourself. Uh, maybe you'd feel better, Mr. Tucker, if you went home and went to bed and no, had some idea. hot broth. Good Are you idea. advising me what to do, young woman? Well, I'm, I'm only trying to make you feel better so you won't be talking such talk. Who says anything about feeling bad? Oh, just a minute ago, you Rubbish said you were... and balderdash. I ain't had a sick day in my life, and I ain't beginning now. 86 is a bad age to begin anything. Well, now you're starting to talk sense. Still, I think you ought to have some hot broth and... We can have Fritz drive you home in the pickup. Come on. What do you take me for, a corpse? Now you listen to me, young woman. There's blood running in these veins and plenty of live muscle growing on my bones. 
If I want to get someplace, I'll get there by myself. I'll walk by God. But, Mr. Tucker, it's such a cold night, it's no trouble to drive you. I don't like Molly Cartland. I was feeling as strong as a young buck I am now, and don't let me tell you otherwise. Now, goodbye. Now, Claudia's right. I think we ought to drive you home, Mr. Tucker. Oh, yes. you singing the same song? Trying to bury me before I'm dead, hey? No. Get out but... of my way. I'm heading home for that rhubarb. I'll let pass by. Well, you're your own boss, Mr. Tucker. I'll say I am. If I hung around you youngins very long, I sure would get depressed. Trying to tell me I ain't going to live to bury my sister. God rest her soul. But we were... And don't see me to the door. I can get there by myself. All this pampering and molly cotton and talking about death. Jared Tucker will show you a thing or two. Just because cold wind blows, don't mean there's going to be a frost. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> well, you're right, David. He is a pretty wonderful old man. Yep, he is at that. But I still think we ought to drive him home. David, oh, why don't no. you go... And... Let him go, darling. Let him live with his own dignity. He's got it back now. Yeah, I think in a way, even without meaning it, we did a pretty good trick. What do you mean, darling? Our pampering him reminded him to stop pampering and worrying himself. Oh. Physically, he's not feeling any better, but... Here, look at him through the window. Mentally, he's pushing himself along, so he thinks he feels better. <laughs> and he's proud of being able to do it. Well, I, I can't help feeling sorry for well, him. Well, you mustn't. <laughs> look at him go. Look at him. Look at his head held straight and his jaws clenched and mm. he's bucking the wind as if he as if he didn't even feel it now. I I wonder what kind of guts I'll have when I come to that time of life when every minute's an hour, every day's a year. The same kind of guts as Jared Tucker, and don't fool yourself. Mm. Instinct doesn't reside only in animals, not by a long shot. Oh, David, kiss me. And um uh, just uh what have you done to deserve a kiss? Nothing. But in case someday I do, someday when we're old and gray together. It's not too late for one more New Year's resolution, so here's a suggestion. Resolve to take things easier when you entertain. Just remember to buy Coke by the case and keep plenty in the refrigerator. With Coca-Cola ready to serve, cold as ice, sparkling and delicious... There's nothing for you to do but open the bottles, offer them round, and share the pause that refreshes. Hello there, Mr. King. Uh, Mr. Tucker. Not home yet, huh? What's everybody rushing me for? Well, it's a cold night out. I don't feel it. You young and you're all sissies. <laughs> Next to you, Mr. Tucker, we are. But you better get on home anyway. Well, I guess might as well. Ain't no one around to chin with. Guess I'll go home and sit down with my world almanac. Now, you need a good strong light to read that book by. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it right in the back of my chair. Well, uh... You have one in back of your chair. Well, that's more than David has tomorrow night when he reads a book. Uh, what? Uh, no light? Well, here again, gone again. Uh, say, Miss Tucker, ever hear of uh, bulb snatching? I can't say that I have. <laughs> then be around tomorrow. You'll hear a lot about it. So long, Mr. Tucker. Uh, see you, son. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.